Hello everyone, Karen with Conscious Cooking and today we are making a very healthy dish and I'm going to show you kind of a different way to use cauliflower. You know, cauliflower is one of those vegetables that not everybody uses in cooking. A lot of times you'll see them on a veggie tray and you eat them with your dip and, and that kind of things. But um, people don't really cook with cauliflower all that much. And if they do, it's kind of like, eh, it's cauliflower. So come into my kitchen. I'm going to show you a great way to use it today. So what I have already done is I've already cooked up some cauliflower. Now I have about, I started with a pound of cauliflower. And this is going to be enough for probably two to three servings. So what I did was I cooked it up with some chicken broth and a clove of garlic. And I just boiled it for about 10 minutes so that cauliflower got nice and tender. And that is actually going to be our sauce for our pasta. So there you go. It's going to be a, a healthy pasta sauce today. And I think you're going to be surprised. It's going to be good. All right. So what we're going to do is I put three quarters of my pound of cauliflower into this pan and I cook that. Into my frying pan now I'm going to be using two tablespoons of olive oil and I'm going to be sauteing the rest of that cauliflower up and I'm going to get it nice and brown. So I'm just going to turn this on here quick and we're going to start browning that up quickly. And that's just going to be almost like, I don't want to say toasting your cauliflower, but just really bringing out those natural sugars in the cauliflower. All our fruits and, or all our vegetables have natural sugars in them. And that when that sugar caramelizes or gets roasted, that's what turns your vegetables brown. It's that caramelization of that sugar coming out. So let's get that here. And we're going to add a little bit of garlic, more garlic, to our... I have my microplane out. Here it is. Um, I like to use my microplane when I do my garlic in recipes like this just because it makes a nice paste instead of a chunk of garlic. Who wants a chunk? Who wants to bite into a chunk of garlic? Uh, no, I don't. So <laughs> I always just make a, um, a good paste with my microplane. I'll show you that here. Watch out for those fingers. Um, I want to be grating those fingers up. But you can see how what a nice paste that made with that microplane. So I'm just going to throw that in there. Always add your garlic to your recipes or to your pan after you've added your other ingredients. One thing you do not want to do is brown your garlic. You know, so many times people say, oh, I don't like garlic. And I will say, are you browning your garlic? I mean, is your garlic like brown when you're, when you're cooking it? Because what happens, mm, this is smelling wonderful. What happens when you do that is your garlic actually can turn bitter. So you want to be careful with that. You want to, uh, you know, add your garlic, I would, you know, not right, not right away into your pan. Let your other ingredients cook a little bit through and then add your garlic. So that is what I'm doing here. And you really, this is only gonna take about two minutes. It's, you know, it's, I like in this dish, I kind of like the crunch of the cauliflower, so I kind of like to um, leave it so that it's crisp, like almost like a crisp tender um, instead of a mushy tender. So, mm, this is smelling wonderful. Alright, so what we're going to be doing is, I'm going to be actually transferring this over to my blender. And then I'm going to be adding my Parmesan cheese and um, getting that nice and blended up. So I, I will show you. I'll bring my blender container over here and I'll, I'll do that here. But I am going to be adding some breadcrumbs now. I use gluten-free breadcrumbs. If you're not gluten-free, go ahead and use regular breadcrumbs if that's what your preference is. But I, I do cook mostly gluten-free for myself and so that is what I um, am using today and it works just fine. So we need, and I'm going, I am reading a recipe here because this is a newer recipe to me. I'm trying a new recipe out today and I'm kind of making it my own by adding a, and subtracting some ingredients. You know, if anybody who knows me knows I don't follow recipes. So it's very, uh, it's very strange for me to be looking at a recipe because normally I'm just throwing things together. 
So, um, but I'm going to be adding about a half of a cup or a fourth of a cup of um, breadcrumbs to this. And I don't know where my fourth of a cup went. So you know what? We're going to improvise and we're going to do four tablespoons because that is going to be about a fourth of a cup. And once again, this doesn't have to be rocket science. You know, if you like a little bit more breadcrumbs, add a little bit more breadcrumbs in. So, uh, really, that's, that's, that's how I roll in my kitchen. It's, it's usually all about looks, how something looks. And uh, I make it hard when somebody wants to make something that I'm making because it's like, hmm, I don't know how much I used. <laughs> I just threw it in. So um, we, we want to toast up these breadcrumbs. So that olive oil is going to do that. Now I want to talk a little bit about your oils. When you are sauteing or using frying, sauteing with any of your oils, you want to make sure that you're using an oil that is good for high heat. Normally olive oil is not. Um, it's more of a low I would say low to medium heat. You want to be careful with olive oil because what happens is when you heat that up, you can actually oxidize it and it can actually turn into to toxic inside your body. So you want to be real careful with that. And I found some that um, said it was good for sauteing. It's actually, you know, a little bit higher heat content. They've processed it. And I don't like saying that word because I don't like processed foods, but. Um, it's made for sauteing and for grilling. Otherwise, if you wanted to, you could use, I also use a lot of times, I will use avocado oil because that's a very healthy oil and that does have a naturally high heat content. You know, content. So you really can uh, find those oils. Just kind of, you know, look for it. It says, it'll tell you the, um, I gotta get my glasses on so I can read this. It's going to tell you that it's high heat. So like right here, it says it says high heat. So I know that that's safe for using in my, my cooking. You know, if you wanted to use your extra virgin olive oil, that's great for salads. That's great for, uh, you know, drizzling on top of your vegetables after they're cooked, if that's what you choose to do. But, oh, these are browning up really nice. Look how nice those breadcrumbs are browning. Yeah. Oh, I wish you could smell this. It smells so good with the garlic in here. And all those breadcrumbs are also helping to nestle that that garlic, so it's not going to burn. So that's just what you kind of want to, you know, make sure that you keep that in mind. And I'm going to turn my other pan off here. I have a pot of boiling water going for my my spaghetti, and. Uh, Alright, well, I'm going to turn you off. I'm going to bring over my blender so that you guys can see me add that all to my um, blender here. So I'm going to turn you off so that you don't have to watch me do that. What I am going to do first though is I'm going to add a little bit of Italian seasoning. So I have about a half a teaspoon of Italian seasoning in there. You know, cooking is all about layering your flavors. I've said that before. I have some garlic in here with my cauliflower already, and I put a little bit of salt in there also. Not a lot, just just a pinch or two of salt. Not 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 a lot, and so that actually helped to season that cauliflower, that broth, and that got all seasoned. Now I'm seasoning my cauliflower here with some Italian seasoning, some more garlic, um, the breadcrumbs, and I'm actually going to take this off because it is like really, all of a sudden turning really brown. So we are going to turn that off because we don't want to burn our breadcrumbs. We want them toasted, but we don't want them burnt. So, all right, so I'm going to just leave that right there, let that cool down. I'm going to bring my blender over and we'll show you how the end of this recipe goes together. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So, we are going to pour this all into our blender. Now, one thing you want to be careful with, this is hot. You can see the steam coming off of this. You do not want to start, and I'll, I might even just turn you around here so you can really watch this. Because you want to be careful with, with hot liquids in a blender. I'm going to grab my towel here so that I have it. I have a clean kitchen towel. 
Um, I always use a clean one for when you're doing something like this. To this, I'm going to be adding a um, half a cup of milk. Now, I use almond milk. You can definitely use regular milk. Nothing wrong with that. Um, but I, I choose to use the almond milk. And then I'm also going to add in um, just about, oh, I want to say two tablespoons of cheese. Now, when you buy your cheese, I highly recommend go the extra mile and buy a good brand of cheese. If you start skimping on cheese like this, this is what gives your dish the flavor. And sometimes those pre-packaged cheese, you know, they're, they're older, they've been sitting for a long time. I like going to my Italian deli and I buy, you know, the Parmesan cheese there because that, I know that it's good. So I know it's fresh and I buy a lot and then I, it's not close to my house, it's like five hours away. So um, when I go to visit my family, I go and I stock up on my, my Italian cheeses and I freeze them. So I have them. But I, I do believe that it is an important thing to really, really get those um, good ingredients. Start with good ingredients, you're going to have a good outcome. So. We are going to blend this. This is going to actually be our sauce for our spaghetti. So I'm going to put this on. I'm going to turn you off here for a sec. Okay, I had to get situated. So, um, what I want to show you is I am going to be taking off the, the top to my Vitamix here. And you can see the steam's coming out of there. Now, if I was to put this on like this and turn this on to high, I'd be cleaning stuff off my, my ceiling because it would, the, the, heat and the pressure would just not stay, keep that lid on. It would, it would fly off. So what you want to do, get a clean kitchen towel, put your hand over there, and if you have to, I mean, really kind of just double it over a couple times. And then you want to start very low. So I'm going to have this on about a one. And then as it starts to incorporate, I'm going to Turn it up very slowly. And this doesn't take long. My cauliflower is already cooked, so it doesn't really take too long. But that's the safe way to do it. So I'm going to move you over here now. And we'll try to. It's always a scary thing when I have to. Um, Move my camera. You never know what it's going to do. So, all right, I gotta watch it because it usually likes to faint after it's been moved. I'm going to put this back in. Can you see how nice and smooth that is? Yum. Okay. I'm going to just try a little bit here. Mm, very good. Nobody's going to taste the cauliflower. <laughs> it's very good. Okay. Um, here all right so I am going to add I did taste when I tasted it I think it needs a little bit more cheese oh, you can never have enough cheese in my house all right so I'm going to add about two more tablespoons of cheese to this and we'll let that cook a little bit And then meanwhile, while this is cooking, and you can kind of cook this until it cooks down a little bit, if it was too thin, you can cook it until it gets a little bit thicker. But this was pretty, pretty good. My Vitamix does a pretty good job. Okay, now I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper. I always say salt and pepper to taste, because everybody's taste buds are different, so, you know, it's... It's a, pr a preference for you, how much salt and pepper you like in your dishes. I don't usually say you have to have so much salt or pepper. Because everybody has different taste buds on that end. Alright. So we're just going to heat this up good. I'm going to throw my pasta. I just have some uh, linguine here that I'm going to throw into my pan. And that's not going to take real long. That's only going to take a couple minutes to cook because the kind I buy is 
Now I buy it in the refrigerator section. It's my gluten-free pasta, and I only really have to cook it for like three minutes. I love it. So, this is, like I said, going to be enough sauce for probably two or three people. So I'm not going to add all this sauce onto my um, pasta. My pasta is not going I, I, I'm only made, I'm going to only eat one serving. It's going to be hard, but I'm only going to eat one serving. All right, then I am going to add... A little bit of parsley. I'm just going to put the parsley into our cauliflower that we have um, resting over here. And you can see that right there. That's um, just our cauliflower and our breadcrumbs that I have toasted. And we're going to sprinkle that on top of our pasta. All right. As soon as that spaghetti is done. I'm going to go grab a bowl here. As soon as that's done, I'm going to put that in there. This is coming together really good. And if you wanted, I could have probably um, blended this a little bit more. It's not as creamy as I would like it. So I actually, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to turn you off. I'm going to blend this a little bit more. Just like I saw a couple little chunks of cauliflower in there. So I'm going to blend this a little bit more, and then I will come back, and I will show you how I put this all together. Okay, I am back. This turned out a lot better when I blended it the second time around. Um, you can really just see how nice and creamy, see how nice and creamy that is? So I really, I put it on high, and I didn't want to deafen you, that's why I turned you off, because that Vitamix is pretty loud. So I just put it on high and I blended it for another minute or two and it's excellent. All right, so I am going to plate up my lunch here. I cannot wait to eat this. This is going to be so good. Okay, let's see if we can get you situated here. All right, one thing I didn't talk about, I did cook up a chicken breast and I'm going to actually put that on top of my spaghetti too. Now, I do not rinse my spaghetti. It's, you know, something that I was brought brought up not doing. And um, if you're eating it right away, you don't have to worry about it getting all stuck together. But you kind of want that stickiness. Now, with gluten-free, you don't get the stickiness like you do with the regular pasta. But I still won't rinse it. Um, but you want that stickiness because you want something that the pasta sauce can adhere to. If you rinse all that starch off, you're not going to, it's not going to stick. And also if your sauce, say you had some pasta sauce that you were trying to thicken up a little bit, maybe it wasn't the red sauce, you know, I could have even done that with my cauliflower sauce if it wasn't thickening up. You can add a little bit of that pasta sauce and the starch in that pasta sauce will help to thicken your sauces too. So just a little bit of a tip there. And I'm going to put, uh, let's see here, I'm going to put about a quarter of a cup onto our pasta. Oh, this looks so yummy. Mmm, it smells so, so good too. And then I'm going to put about a quarter of a cup of our cauliflower and our breadcrumbs on top of that. Doesn't that look good? I sneak a few more breadcrumbs. They look so good. And maybe a little bit, a couple more pieces of cauliflower. There you go. Oh, yum. And then to top it off, we are going to add our chicken breast to top that off. So there is a wonderful lunch. Yum. Doesn't that look good? I'm going to have to give this a taste. I, I really do. I, I have to taste it. Um, with that Parmesan cheese in there, you got the, the kind of the crunch of the breadcrumbs. Mmm. Mmm. Mm, very good. Give this recipe a try. I think you're going to be very, very um, surprised. And don't tell your family that you made it with cauliflower. They're going to think it's Alfredo sauce. So give it a try, and I think you're going to love this. I have enough for another whole meal, so I think that's what I might even have leftovers for tomorrow. So have an amazing night. Hope you enjoyed this recipe. If you did, um, please click like on my either my YouTube page, um, if you're watching this on my YouTube channel, 
um, follow me on YouTube. I'd love to see the, the new followers coming in. And um, you can also comment on how you liked it on the Facebook page. So have an amazing day, and I'll be back soon with another Conscious Cooking Recipe with Karen. Talk to you later.